Coati, also known as a Coatimundi, this raccoon relative is found in Mexico, Central and South America, with some of them also living in Texas, Arizona, and New Mexico in the U.S. Females and young males live in large groups, while adult males often live alone. They are noted for their intelligence, and although they feed mostly on worms, eggs, fruits, and insects, they are armed with large fangs and powerful claws and are very capable of hunting larger animals once in a while. According to some accounts, one of the coati's favorite meals is the green iguana. These large lizards are often found in trees, so coati packs use teamwork to hunt them. Some of the coatis climb trees and scare the iguanas into leaping to the ground, where the other coatis quickly capture them. Unfortunately for the iguanas, they are instinctively programmed to leap to the ground whenever they feel threatened, making the coati's trick a simple but very effective one. Futurus firefly. Fireflies are not true flies. They belong to the Coeliptera order, which would make them a kind of beetle. They are well known for their light-producing ability, bioluminescence. Most fireflies use their light to communicate with each other, mostly to attract a mate. This is the case of the Photinus firefly. Female Photinus have very short wings and can't fly. Males, on the other hand, can. During mating season, male Photinus fly above the ground emitting flashes to attract females. The females in the ground watch the males and respond with their own flashes. Since each firefly species has a unique flashing pattern, males can easily tell their potential mates from females belonging to another species. At least, most of the time. Enter the Futurus firefly. This creature spies on the females of other species and mimics their flashing patterns to attract unsuspecting males. When the males descend to the ground ready to mate, they are quickly attacked and devoured by the Futurus firefly. Yes, it is even worse than being eaten by a fake pizza delivery guy. By eating the male Fatinus, the Futurus firefly, sometimes nicknamed the Femme Fatale firefly, not only gets a good meal, but also protection. The Fatinus fireflies have certain chemical substances that protect them from predators such as birds and spiders. The Futurus lacks this chemical defense, but can acquire it by devouring unfortunate Fatinus males. Alligator Snapping Turtle this infamous predator is the largest freshwater turtle in North America and lives in southern U.S. lakes, rivers, and swamps. Although armed with powerful jaws and sharp claws, the alligator snapper is still a turtle and can't chase after prey at high speed. Instead, it uses a hunting technique very similar to that of the Cantile Pit Viper. It lies motionless in the water, looking very much like a harmless rock with its jaws wide open. Its tongue has a fleshy appendage that looks much like a worm, and the turtle can move this appendage to make it even more worm-like. Small fish, frogs, and even other turtles are often fooled into believing that they found dinner, but as soon as they enter the gator snapper's jaws to attack the worm, the turtle closes its mouth with tremendous force, instantly killing its prey. This clever technique works best during day, when prey can clearly see the fake worm. At night, the turtle actively walks on the lake or river bottom, feeding on whatever slow-moving or dead animal it can find. Green Heron. Alligator snapping turtle have fake lures evolved from their own body parts. The green heron, however, manages to lure fish into attack range without this advantage. How? Well, it uses bait. Indeed, green herons have been known to drop small objects onto the surface of water. Small fish are tricked into investigating the object, hoping it may be something edible, and then the heron quickly snatches the unsuspecting victim. Not all green herons use this technique, but those who do become quite talented, and they even experiment with different kinds of bait. Some herons have been seen stealing the bread that people feeds to ducks and ponds and using the bread as bait. Other herons have been known to capture small fish, but instead of eating them, they use them as bait for larger fish. No one knows how green herons learnt to fish with bait. Some experts believe they learnt from humans, while others think they learnt by themselves by observing how small fish would investigate any small object or animal that fell to the water. Either way, this behavior is obviously not instinctive making the green heron quite possibly the smartest predator in this list. Spider-eating assassin bug. Assassin bugs are among the deadliest predatory insects. They are not very fast, but use many different and ingenious techniques to hunt. Some disguise themselves as ants to prey on real ants. Others use camouflage to ambush prey. One of the most amazing assassin bugs feeds mostly on spiders. When this bug finds a spider web, it uses its legs to tap into the silk threads, sending vibrations that are very similar to those produced by an insect that has become stuck in the web. The spider senses the vibrations and goes for the attack, only to be ambushed and killed by the assassin bug. It is, really, a cruel way to go. It's just as if someone knocked on your door and said, it's the pizza delivery guy. You open the door, your mouth watering in anticipation, only to be paralyzed and devoured yourself. Margay. The ancient Romans believed in a monster called the Crocata. 
It was said to be a wolf-like beast, native to India or Ethiopia, with the ability to mimic human speech. When hungry, the Krakata would hide near human villages or houses, and listen carefully to people's conversations. Eventually, it would learn someone's name and call that person by his or her name, luring him into the woods and devouring him. Although a cool and frightening concept, the Krakata was nothing more than an exaggerated version of a real-life beast, the hyena, a creature that can indeed make some eerie, human-like sounds, but is completely unable to mimic speech. Today, the spotted hyena's scientific name, Krakuta Krakuta, is a tribute to this legendary monster. There is, however, a certain predator that does mimic the speech of its victims to lure them to their doom. It was recently discovered that the margay, a small arboreal feline from Mexico, Central and South America, has the ability to mimic the calls of baby monkeys in distress. This, of course, attracts worried adult monkeys, which can then be attacked and devoured by the margay. Scientists who witnessed this while doing research in Brazil just couldn't believe their eyes, but natives were not surprised. They informed the scientists that margays can also imitate the sounds of other animals, such as the tinamo, a flightless bird, and the agouti, a large rodent. Even more, the natives claim that pumas and jaguars also use vocal mimicry to hunt once in a while. As if that wasn't enough, people in India and Siberia have often reported that tigers can mimic deer calls to lure the unsuspecting herbivores into an ambush. Although this has yet to be confirmed by science, the margay is the proof that it is not impossible after all. According to the scientists who witnessed the margay in action, cats are known for their physical agility, but this vocal manipulation of prey species indicates a psychological cunning that merits further study. At least we can be happy that cats have yet to learn how to mimic human speech. Contil. Found in Mexico and Central America, this snake belongs to the pit viper subfamily and is closely related to the cottonmouth and copperhead vipers from the southern United States. They are highly venomous, their bite causes necrosis, hemorrhage, and even renal failure. Victims who don't receive any medical attention after a cantile bite are likely to die in a few hours. But these pit vipers prefer to save their venom for their prey. They feed on any small animal they can catch, from birds and frogs to lizards and small mammals. Unlike fast-moving elipids such as cobras and mambas, the cantile has a short, heavy body and can't chase quickly after prey. Instead, it uses a clever trick to lure their victims into attack range. Its tail has a bright yellow or whitish tip, and the snake can move its tail so that it resembles a wriggling worm. Since many of its favorite prey feed on worms, they are tricked into approaching or even attacking the lure, and then the snake can strike and inject its deadly venom on the unsuspecting would-be predator. Although cantile vipers are not the only snakes that use their tail to trick prey, they are possibly the best known for it. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.